and go. Good morning, Around the Diamond family. We are back. Another episode of ATD dropping on a Saturday morning, and we are officially in baseball mode. Games are started. We are two games in, and man, has this first couple of games been so exciting. We're going to talk about it. We're going to go through the stats, the standings, and what these teams have to look forward to. But we got to start this day off, as we always do, on a bright, beautiful Saturday. Baseball Bill, how are you doing on this beautiful Saturday morning? I'm excited. It's finally baseball season time. I got to shock Sam a little bit this morning while we were doing some pregame. Um, that was always good. Uh, I love We'll talk fact. about that in about 10 seconds because I was mind blown. Yeah. I mean, I'm excited about that. I'm excited about the fact that I, I was able to show Sam, you know, a, a very fantastic clip from an 80s movie when we were talking about Texas. And so, yeah, we're, you know, we're all good today. We're ready to go, Sam. Dude, have you been as mind blown with these last two days worth of baseball as I've been? Um, yes. And we're going to talk about that. Absolutely. One thousand. Yeah, I'm like, I'm so let's get this started. There was one big signing this week. I was expecting him to sign. Bill was expecting him to sign the team. He signed with left field came out of there. Jordan Montgomery signs a one year, $25 million contract with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Bill, you've got strong feelings about this. Lay them on the fans at ATD. What do you got to take? All right. So here's my thing with this. Um, I So I don't like one-year deals. Uh, if you're at the end of your career, I like one-year deals. But I don't like one-year deals when you're like dead in the middle of it. Now, Jordan Montgomery has not had a season where he's had more than 10 wins ever in his career. So you just paid $25 million for a guy who averages about 130 innings a season and nine wins. Too much. Too much. Way too much. Way then, too much. Again, we know who his agent is, and his agent would sell out his own grandmother to get an extra year on a contract. Um, and so, I mean, I'm not going to mention his agent, nor are you, Sam, because I don't want us to get sued. But I um, I just, this is way too much money for this guy. And by the way, no spring training. Now, difference between he and Blake Snell, Blake Snell hasn't pitched a competitive inning since September. So Blake Snell hasn't pitched a competitive inning in six months. At least Jordan Montgomery pitched through the World Series, so he's got a little bit more time. But I, I just don't like this move. I don't like it. I I would have liked a one year, maybe fifteen million dollar deal because you know he's not going back to Arizona. I'll I'll, I'll put a stake on it that he's not going back to Arizona. Yeah, no, I don't think you need to put a stake on it. I I think you could go and put a hundred down in Vegas on it, and easily e they'll probably just hand you hand you your winnings like the moment you put the bet in because they're like, they, they don't even have to think about it. Um, I look at this as a setup move. Uh, I don't see Jordan really doing much with the Diamondbacks. What I see happening is, and we talked about this right before the show went off, the, I have a feeling a team in New York starts with Y, ends with Yankees, could be Yankees, just put it together. Um, it's probably going to end up trading for this guy because Garrett Cole, in my opinion, is absolutely going to be going out on Tommy. John surgery. They are going to nation spot. Not a, he's not going to be their ace. There is no question Jordan Montgomery would be an ace on the Yankees, but he is that guy that you could probably throw into the fourth or fifth starter spot. Um, like you said, ten wins, maybe, maybe he might push it to eleven, but doubtful. Um. But you need someone that's going to be able to fill that spot. That's got a that's got, you know, experience at this level of the game. Um, yeah, this makes zero sense. The other thing we talked about, Bill, was that there's usually that one team that makes one move out of left field over the last four to five seasons in free agency, and this is it. This is that team. 
they came out of left field and said, you know what, we're just going to do it. We're going to pull the trigger and see what we can make happen. Um, do you see this being that kind of, do you see this possibly being a let like a, a trade bait move that the Diamondbacks were like, we're going to take advantage of this because we can see the right. I actually don't. I actually don't. I actually think this is, I think this is the Diamondbacks realizing that they were what three wins away from a championship last season. And they're trying to booster the rotation a bit. Um, I mean, they've already got a really good rotation. Uh, and and we'll talk when we show the standings, we'll talk a little bit about how they started. But frankly, I now I think this is more of a move that, hey, we were we fell short by a couple of games last season and we've got to compete against the Dodgers and San Diego. We got to compete against uh, the Giants um, and we don't have to worry about the Rockies. No, then yeah, that's a very good point. So we'll talk. Let's let's jump right. In. Let's just really quick talk about these. I mean, these guys unfortunately weren't able to be signed before the start of the season. But don't count your chickens out on these five players. I would not be surprised with within the next couple of weeks. You saw these guys maybe be the AAA teams. You know. Maybe just staying warm, staying ready, possibly going to another league where they might feel competitive. I mean, Japanese league is always available. Um, anything on these guys, Phil? Don't want we don't need to spend too much time on these players. No, I I don't think they're not playing. Yeah, I I just don't think that there's going to be much there for them. Yeah, these guys are going to be like someone gets seriously injured and we need a vet to come in and fill the spot for a bit. These could be guys that you could possibly call on. But other than that, I don't think you're going to, unfortunately, see much with them. Most of them, like Evan and Brandon, um, I'd even go as far as to say even Corey. I mean, really, Corey, too. These guys are at the end of their careers. It's, you know, at the time when you're going to start seeing them probably hang them up. So, But let's get into some standings. I mean, again, we're two games in to the season. Uh, if you're a Dodgers or a Padres fan, you're four games in now. Um, Bill. What are you thinking on this AL standings? AL standings, uh, pretty simple. <clears throat> um, <laughs> I love the A's down there. Um, pretty simple. The Rangers are doing what the Rangers need to do. Uh, Mariners, uh, I'll get to the East in a second. Mariners are doing well. Angels had a terrible opening day. Astros have had a couple of rough days. Um, the A's are starting exactly where they're uh, what I thought. Don't get used to the Guardians being where they're at. Remember who the Guardians are playing. Um, the Tigers, Royals, or Twins are going to win that division. Uh, the White Sox haven't scored a run yet this season, so sorry about your luck. Uh, the Yankees have had a really, really good I, I come from behind win. Juan Soto, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but the Yankees have done what they've needed to do. They've gotten deep in pitch counts. They've gotten into the, the Astros bullpen, which is struggling right now. Um, the Orioles manhandled the Angels. The Red Sox are a team to watch out for. Um, and then the Rays and, and Blue Jays, you know, they're playing each other, so they're beating up on each other. Yeah. Uh, do you – you know, it, it's, it's, you know, are the Yankees playing, like, October ball – like, September, October ball right now? No. You know, like you – I mean, you mentioned – well, when I'm – the reason I bring up that type of play is because you – you mentioned like they're getting into the Astros bullpen. They're running them deep into innings. They're taking up their pitch counts. You know, typically right now, as you're, as you're coming into the season, you're still seeing, you're not always seeing pitchers going deep in pitch counts still. You're still typically seeing them going maybe 80, 90 pitches max. You know, when I say they got, they're playing October, September, October baseball, are they starting off with this mentality of, we're going to go deep, so we're going to play deep? Maybe. Maybe. Um, I I, I think the juices were flowing for everybody on, on opening day. So I think that the Yankees played to that. The Astros were at home. The Astros, in big games at home, the last couple of seasons have struggled. Right. Um, you know, a la the American League Championship Series, right? Um, and so what – you the Yankees are just, they're playing fundamental ball right now, but they're also one injury away from 
having a really bad season. That's very true, too. So try to get that fan base going while they can until something possibly sinks them. Looking at yeah. the National League, though, Braves are starting off hot. And what is going on this in this NL East? It's not like a single team can get a win in that point, in that division. Um, You know, Braves are already projected to be the NL East winners. So they're really just starting off where they left off last year. Um, moving over to the Central, Bill, you said it in the preseason prediction. You've said it this entire offseason. Do not sleep on the Pirates, and they are showing you in these first two games why. That first game of the season going into extra innings, going into, what, the 13th or 14th inning, they just – they are they are going to be the team to watch in that Central. Do not sleep on that division this year. The NL Central last year – You could have taken a full nap and made it through the baseball season if you were in the NL Central. This year, I would almost predict the NL Central and the NL West are going to be the two divisions you want to keep your eye on. And moving over to the West, D-backs are starting off hot 2-0, but the Dodgers are right there. It's not like they're far behind. Um, Padres and Giants are right now in a back-to-back battle, so they're both 500. And then the Rockies are doing what the Rockies do. Bill, what are your thoughts on the on the National League? Well, first of all, we got a course correction here. So if the Pirates are 2-0 and and they beat the Marlins twice, how are the Marlins 0-1? Oh, I, I missed it. It, it. You know what? You can blame the MLB app for that because if I were, <laughs> because when I did it this morning, the MLB app still said they were 0-1. And Jordan so. Montgomery's played for the Yankees too. Um, okay. Yes. So uh, National League's going to be – going to be fun to watch. Um, obviously, the Mets are not going to mess around. They're going to come out fighting literally yesterday. Um, Philly got manhandled. Uh, Braves showed him what's going on. Um, actually, you know, typically I don't, you know, have dogs in those races. But today I do have Max Freed on my fantasy team. So I would like him to have a very good outing. I need him to have a very good outing. Uh, Reds Fair and enough. Pirates and Cubs are going to be right there. Uh, don't sleep on it. There's four of the five teams in the West that you just can't sleep on. So, no. um, yeah, I, I do think the Dodgers will be in first place. Uh, I do think they'll win the division, but we'll see. How, and that's not me being a homer. That's just about everybody that looks at their lineup. But we'll yeah. see how it all plays out, right? I don't want to count the chickens. That's true. Looking at these stats, you know, we don't want to dig too deep into stats in the first two games of the season. There's a lot that's happening, but the one stat we're going to touch on real brief between this slide and our home run slide is that RBI leaders statistic. Mookie Betts, and we're four games into the season if you're a Dodger fan. I mean, let's just, I mean, Bill, this is pretty crazy. This is yeah. crazy. I mean, Dodgers have just been. I mean, they they typically rake, mm-hmm. but Mookie is playing lights out right now. Oh yeah, what he, is it about? What's he doing? He's he's a little ticked off that he came in second in the uh, MVP ballot, and I'm sure. And he says, "Hold my caffeine free coke. I got this this year." Um, I think he's got two or three home runs already. Uh, I mean, he's he's right. just on fire right now, and so, yeah. but don't don't also. Don't also sleep on those uh, strikeout leaders. I mean, Corbin Burns, Shane Bieber, and Bobby Miller had great outings, their first outings. 11 strikeouts is huge. Oh, yeah, 100. I'm not not taking anything away from that. Those are guys, in my opinion, though, we're expecting to see up there right now. You know, especially this early in the season. I mean, that's why I don't want to sleep on it because we, you and I both, this is why I don't really want to touch too much on this until like this we do it so people are aware of what's going on but by the third week of the season things start to balance out and that's why i'm not putting so much effort into people monitoring this for now wait two weeks it'll look a lot different in two weeks um now as we go into the stolen bases and the home run counts for this year so far we want to touch on what happened last year so last year we start we ended the season with 3500 stolen bases we're at 29 right now jose siri from the tampa bay rays is leading bill 
just talking stolen bases for ten, for 30 seconds, will we see a similar outlook in total stolen base count this year as we did to last year? And, if, and that, whether we are, yes or no, why? 100%. I actually think that we'll beat the stolen base uh, number that we did last year. And there's one name on here that you are one name that you haven't put on here yet. Everybody pay attention to Victor Scott, the second Victor Scott, the second um, stole 94 bases in AAA last year for the St. Louis Cardinals. Um, he swiped one at Dodger stadium. I was watching that game. That dude was brushing himself off, asking for timeout before the ball even got there um, because he knows how to, to work the disengagement rule. He knows that he can get big enough leads out there and get the throws over, and then he can just time the pitcher and go take off. Expect that guy, expect Scott to have between 50 and 75 stolen bases this season. Mark my words. Yeah, and, and that's totally uh, – I yeah, I mean, he's not a guy I've paid attention to, but I'm sure, you know, being that he was playing against your team right now currently, he's the guy that you're watching. Um, I'm big. No, no, no I'm big to, on the rookies this year. I'm big on the rookies. I'm big on I have Jackson. To, I have to look more. I have to look more into the rookies. Um, for right now, but no, there's gonna be. This is gonna be a great rookie class. This rookie yeah. class is going to be insane. I can the the bat. I don't like. I said I haven't, but the battle for the rookie of the year in the AL and the NL is going to be so tight. Yep. So tight this season. It's you're like, it's gonna be the it's gonna be fun to watch that. Um, ha, off topic slightly, how is it seeing Brandon Crawford in a Cardinals jersey in Dodger Stadium? And did he get booed as much as he did when he was in a Giants jersey? I don't think that he's started yet. Uh, yeah, he started. He was the opening day starter for the. Oh, Cardinals that's right. He was. Jordan. Yeah. No. Um. That that opening day was a little screwy for um for the Cardinals. I mean, they got three hits and they were all by Paul Goldschmidt. Um, and no, they 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 didn't pay much attention to it. They were more concerned about Nolan Arenado and and uh, um, Paul Goldschmidt. Well, good and and real brief on that. I mean, you got probably two of the best corner infielders in baseball on your team, and you're still zero and two. D- not to go back to the standings real quick, but do you think the Cardinals are posed, poised for a bounce back, or no. do you see them saying it down in the dumps? Yeah, I, I they're not poised for a bounce back. They are not poised for a bounce back. I've watched um, a significant portion, uh, all of the first game and some of yesterday's game. They are not poised for a bounce back. They are, in fact, they are in for a very long season. Um, they made the the simple mistake that they have gotten older, not younger. Um, and in addition to getting older and not younger, they haven't solidified the pitching yet. And that's a big, 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 big deal. Okay. Good. Inside information from the man himself, Baseball Bill, about the team he's watching play his team right now. Moving over to the home run count. You know what's you know what is different about this list this year than last year? Shohei Otani is currently not on it. Now, as we are looking at the home run leaders, though, last year we almost had 6,000 home runs. We ended with 58, just shy of 5,900. And Mookie Betts, as you mentioned earlier, Bill, when we were looking at the RBI count, Mookie Betts is leading that charge. Chapman's right behind. But, I mean, this this is a tight race right now in home runs. Again, we're only four games into the season. I'm going to ask you the same question as I asked you a minute ago on the stolen base count. Will we see similar numbers this year to last year? And if so, why? Yes. If so or so not, why? Yes. Um, you'll see similar numbers to last year. Um, players have gotten better. Hitters have gotten better, but pitchers have gotten better. So don't be surprised if you have three to five pitchers that have over 200 strikeouts. And don't be surprised if you have three to five players that hit 45 plus home runs. Okay. Do you think we'll, do you think we'll beat this year's total count? Last year's total count. Um, That's a high number. Uh, But I'll, I'll take the over. I'll take the over on both of these. Do you, so you, so in saying that you're thinking that 
while pitchers have had the offseason now to really train themselves to adjust to the new pitch clock rules, you're saying players have out-trained the pitchers in that stance and are still going to outperform them when it comes to staying on top of the pitch count and staying on top of the stolen base. Yeah, the the thing that plagues pitchers and the thing that plagues hitters is velo and exit velocity. For some reason, everybody's concerned about velo and exit velocity, velo and exit velocity. Um, and so when pitchers are more concerned about their velo, they make mistakes and then the exit velocity happens. Um, right. When players are more concerned about their exit velocity, you get strikeouts. So Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. It'll Do be think- interesting to watch this play out. Uh, are, I, are you we will are you on the over or under oh. on this one? I am gonna. I'm actually gonna go with the middle. I'm gonna say we're gonna stay right. No, I'm gonna say we're gonna stay right. Or I'm gonna say, uh, I guess you'll. I'm giving it within ten each way. You know what I mean? I'm giving ten up, ten down. So when I say in the middle, I think we're gonna stay right around the fifty eight hundred mark. Maybe we'll do. You know, it could. I think it could go as high as fifty. 5878 or as low as 5858. Like, I don't think it's going to be as far off from this number as we were last year. I think pitchers, well, I don't think the players out trained the pitchers. And yeah, I agree with you. They're primarily worried about exit velocity and all this other stuff. But I think the pitchers got better in this offseason and are, and they're bringing up more younger pitchers now that have been playing under this pitch clock rule longer than MLB players that haven't been able to be as exposed to it as the guys in the triple A and double A and single A. Um, So I think we're going to see, like you said, pitchers got better. I think we're going to start seeing that more this year and we'll stay right around this mark. Um, I think though we will exceed the steel count, the steel count number. So we'll keep, we're going to keep this total number up from last year to this year so we can really see it we're yeah. going to want to monitor we want to see how we go so we'll be watching this all year long looking at the injury report this page could realistically be three pages so we're not even going to talk about it um yeah. a lot of guys are out for the season already most guys are going to be back middle of the season but you really want to get a good a glimpse of this go to cbs uh, the CBS injury report page. That's where all this information comes from. And you can see how long the injury report realistically is. I'm not going to go into it. Um, but let's talk about opening day. There was a lot of things that happened this, op- this opening day weekend so far. And we still got two gay- days worth of baseball left to play in opening weekend. Um, what was your most – what is the one thing you're going to take from all of the games so far we've seen as, like, your biggest highlight? I hate the jerseys. I, I, I hate the new jerseys. I hate on the back of the Dodgers jersey how the the name is smaller and it's all in blue. I The Yankees jersey looks like it's the throwback jerseys, the way that it's just all in black. And, like, I – yeah, no, I'm just kidding. Um, what am I going to take away from this? I'm going to take away that there's been a lot of good baseball and you're going to see – very soon and very early, certain teams rising to the top um, and certain teams rising or uh, sinking to the bottom. Uh, it's okay. going to be very early this season. Very early. Okay. So let's, so I agree with you. I think, you know, there are already teams that are showing their colors the A's, the Cardinals, um, who else? Rockies. The Rockies. The Rockies. Um, I'm going to, Give the Royals a slight pass for right now, but if in two weeks they're still where they are, I will jump on the bandwagon that they've shown their colors. Um, but is there one team with what they've done in these first two games of the season that you're like, okay, compared to last year, this is the team that is going to be a difference maker in this division? Compared to last year. Um, I think the Padres have a bounce back year. Honestly, I, I, in in all reality, you mentioned the Royals. The Royals are young, and in all reality, the Royals could be a playoff team this season. I don't anticipate them to be at the bottom of that heap. I think actually Cleveland and the White Sox. Are gonna, White Sox lost one to nothing, and they had a gem pitched by their pitcher. 
So you, the White Sox have a lot of, of issues that they need to work through, a lot of issues that they need to work through. Um, and so uh, up to and including ownership, actually. Uh, so you have that. Uh, but honestly, you know, you're going to see the Padres get a lot better this year than they were last year. Uh, some mm -hmm. people in San Diego are saying that Juan Soto was the problem. I don't think Juan Soto was the problem. I think the Padres were the problem as a whole. Yeah. I don't think it was Juan Soto. Um, well, you know, I, I ask you this question because like a team like the Pirates, the team that team is a team you've been high on since la since the offseason started. You were like, yeah. watch the Padres next year. So is the Padres going to be a difference maker in the National League Central? You mean the Pirates? And just completely shit. I mean, yeah, I'm sorry. Are the Pirates going to be a team that shakes up the National League Central? Yeah. Because yeah. over the last couple of years, it's been almost, uh, you know, a standard, at least the last two years, where it's the Brewers and the Cubs, the Brewers and the Cubs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's a great question. So um, if I'm looking at the Central right now, I'm looking at it and I'm saying it's going to be a three-way juggernaut and it's going to be back and forth. I still think it could be one with 87 games. But it's going to be Pirates, Reds, um, Cubs. Okay. I can see that. I can absolutely see that. Um, <coughs> and, you know, we mentioned you, – you mentioned during, when we looked at the standings that the National League West is a four-horse race. Um, all of baseball – I think 99.9999998 – percent of people that either follow baseball or could just look at the Dodgers lineup or like, yeah, there's no question. But is there one team? And again, we're very early in the season. So again, I'm not holding you to this. We could ask you this in a month and you could change your answer. I'm sure. But is there one team right now you're looking at and saying like, out of the Diamondbacks, the Padres and the Giants that you're like, they've got all the potential to just, <laughs> run away with this with number two run away with number two Padres okay Padres yeah they they've got a lot of excitement down there right now um they got a lot of excitement down there right now they've got really good they've got a three uh three pitching rotation that are can be very good Darvish uh Musgrove and um Dylan Cease now Musgrove has not looked stellar in his first two starts so if that's the Musgrove that you're getting, the Padres are in trouble. Um, right. But if it's the Musgrove that we know and love, yeah, it's it's going to be good. He was not stellar, even though the Padres won game two that he started um, in uh, Seoul. He did not look great. Um, yeah. Nor did he look great. He did great not look good last night. Yeah. No. Last night did not look good. Giant, you know, Chapman took him for – took them the yard straight to center. You know, they were really hitting them hard in the early inning. Um, you know, I agree with you. Yeah, the Padres could have a bounce back year. I just think that those, you know, the Padres, the Diamondbacks, and the Giants right now in the West, it's going to be so tight. It's going to be fun to watch. So make sure you're staying here so Bill and I can keep talking about it all year long because Absolutely. you're going to – and we want to hear what your thoughts are. So make sure you are commenting and letting us know where your thoughts are because I want to bring in a segment later in the season that says, what are the fans talking about? So yeah. if you don't let us know, we're never going to talk about it. Yeah, 100%. Just saying, fans. Bill, as we wrap the show up, you have put together, again, a wonderful podcast schedule. Friday, though, is going to be a toss-up. Walk yep. me through your schedule this week. So Friday, or so Monday, we have Dave, Marty, and Steven, and that's co-hosted by Megan and Jackie. That's going to be a great episode. You don't want to miss that one. Tuesday, Tony's talking about the Reds and the excitement that he has for his team. Wednesday, Lewis is a new uh, guest to the clubhouse. He's a Dodger fan. And then um, Alexis uh, is a new guest to the clubhouse. And she is not a Dodger fan. She is a... You told me a dot. You, you, the information bad. I'm My looking bad. at is she's a Dodgers fan. My bad. She, I believe she's a Padres fan, if I'm not mistaken. No, I'm sorry. She's an what? Astros fan. She's an Astros oh, fan. then she's really going to be hating this. It, it, Alexis, if you are watching, this was not information I came up with. This information was provided to me. When you do your sketch, when you do your podcast, just remember that. Yes. <laughs> yep. Um, And in the leagues this week, 
Bill, you always bring in great guests throughout the week, but you can always count on Bill to host Would You Rather Wednesdays and Mets Megan to take over on Fridays. Um, it is always a fun show. Make sure if you are in the Houston area or traveling to the Houston area or have had a thought of going to Houston specifically around April 13th, make sure you are going around that time frame because Baseball Bill, Mets Meg, and the Astros crew are going to be having a post-game cocktail reception at Angel Share on the 13th. More details to come next Get week. Get your tickets. So make sure you are tuning in. Get your tickets. Stay here. We will give you more details to discuss next week on that. Um, Bill, any final words for the fans out there on no, ATV? We are going to pay attention to our social medias. We are going to have some more announcements about Autism Awareness Month for uh, the month of April and charity that we're going to be partnering up with. Be prepared to, to hear a lot of fun stuff when it comes to that and ways where you could potentially uh, donate or give back. So um, I just I'm very excited about that. It is a close spout that philanthropy, this type of philanthropy is super close to not just Bill's heart, but even more mine as how, as I have a family member with autism. Um, so I am truly thankful, Bill, that you and the team at Top Fan have gone out and found a fantastic organization to partner with. I know it's going to be great. Make sure if you are watching this, Throughout the month of April, go support support your local charity. Support the Top Fan Rivalry charity. Um, it's a group of uh, individuals that really need that support. And all the money that's donated really goes towards helping them build a brighter future. So thank you, Bill, for everything that you're doing in regards to that. As always, make sure you're checking out topfanrivalry.com for new articles, podcasts, merch. Watch party should be up there. If not, they will be up later this week as far as I've been made aware. So it is going to be a fun time on the watch party train this season. We thank you so much for joining us on ATD for the first episode of the official MLB season. And we can't wait to see you on the field next week to join us for week two. See you soon.